So this is part two of finding your artistic voice. And I'm going to put a little bit of a recap from last two weeks ago when we initially talked about creating a Pinterest board with the things that are all a part of you. So I'm going to play a little bit of the clip from uh, two weeks ago to refresh your memory. If you haven't created your Pinterest board with those pictures that I talked about that are, are the really meaningful pictures that you absolutely love, when you see it you say, that is so me then you can still do that. But I'm going to go to part two because I promised that I would um, come back and um, we're on a swing here and do part two of finding your voice. I truly believe that finding your voice as an artist is just as important as your composition and um, value and all those things within your art. If you don't know your artistic voice, you're going to continually be on this hamster wheel to look for it. And you're going to continually be searching and searching. I've done that. I've been there. You're going to be looking where well, I'm not going to go into all the reasons why you know. But the thing is to get to why do you like what you like in your world who you are in your world, and how can we put all that together to incorporate that into your art so that it really shows and it starts to all work. When I have these moments in my life where some things start to click of my why and who I am, I get messages from other artists and other collectors that say, I see a difference in your work. Um, I really, there's a series, I see a passion going on. And it co coincides when I've developed another piece of who I am. So it's ongoing for me. It will be ongoing for you. But if you don't have this piece down, it's critical. It's fun, but it is a critical part of developing your art because it's all going to go into your art and I can't I can't repeat that enough so let's get going on this part and I'll do a kind of recap of uh, two weeks ago and then we'll jump into how to marry all the pieces of the Pinterest board that you collected how to marry that with this next big piece has been mulling around in my mind and this is only a very small part of this topic and that is finding your artistic voice and I want to address that topic in a way here where you are are looking at who you are and how that affects your art there's so many different ways that I have had other artists tell me how to find my artistic voice. And while so much of it was helpful to me, it wasn't until I really started to study who I was as a person, the things I loved within my clothing, the things I loved within my house, and even deeper than that, my childhood and the things that made up Cheryl Wilson. And so that's what I wanted to share with you today. And I wanted to share with you just one way in um, the realm of many of things that you can do. And that is to go to your Pinterest. If you don't have a Pinterest account, I suggest you open one up because this exercise will really help you. And we can talk later about the benefit of having a Pinterest account when you start showing your art but under this Pinterest account we're going to open up a separate board 
And that board you can call whatever you want, but I call mine artistic aesthetic. So create a board under, you click the save button, you're gonna create your board, give it a name, and then in that board, you're gonna start saving, and this is the critical part, all the pens, they call it, that are very meaningful to you. And what I mean by that is there's going to be a lot of beautiful pictures you're going to see that you're going to like. But grab the ones that really touch you, that really take your breath away, that really make you feel something. So I hope that makes sense to you. And I hope that you have done, if it's not on a Pinterest board, um, even through magazines and print, I've done a lot of those big boards where I've glued things to it. So I hope you've done that. So you're going to take these things that are really meaningful to you in your life. And for instance, the girl with the colored feet on the bottom. Um, the paths that I showed that meant a lot to me because they were very moody paths and they were, um, some people may call them lonely paths, but to me, they, I felt at home there. Um, branches of trees that were just the branches um, going up and out. Um, the material, the textures of the materials. And I started to, to marry that with, as a child, the things that happened to me. And it was a, it's going to take you time to look at those pictures and then think about who you are, memories of when you were a child, Memories of when you were with your parents, the memories that meant the most to you, memories of things that made you sad, different things in your life that were pivotal points. As a child for me, I, one, I don't have a deep memory. Um, I've been to psychiatrists or what do you call them? places and I've asked why don't I remember my childhood the things I remember are from pictures or videos because my dad did a lot of pictures and I've never been able to understand that question and to one person said well you only remember the most important things because if you moved a lot as a child you um, there's just a lot in there so your brain had to let go of some things to capture other things well that made sense so let's go with that but I look at pictures and I see we traveled a lot. My dad was in the Air Force Band, so we did. And my dad took us out of school a lot and my teachers were very okay with that back then. And it was almost like a homeschooling situation where I would get the homework and I would travel with my family through Spain and Barcelona and Portugal. And even in the United States, I've lived a lot of places. And a lot of where I studied was in the back of the band room. Um, I lived in a lot of houses. I had a lot of animals. And another thing it was I was a middle child. My mother used to call me Flopsy Mopsy or something like that because she said I, I just grew up. My mother worked as a school teacher and she went with my dad all over the place. So she had to get a new teaching job wherever we went. So my life was very collectic and um, very on the road. And I had an older brother who required a lot of attention and a younger sister who was five years younger. So I didn't get a lot of attention and I was a very mild child. I made my own way. I remember in school, a teacher one time saying, you go to the principal's office because um, glue belongs on the paper, not on your hand. And I would pile glue in my hand and watch it dry and draw lines through it. 
even in art class, instead of drawing on the paper, I would draw my legs and my arms. And I just was one of those that colored outside the boxes, although I was a very, I was a very compliant child. I never got in trouble other than the situations where when it came to my mind wandering, I did. Then as I went into adulthood, some of the things that had traumatic effects on me is my brother was murdered, and I won't go into a lot of detail, but he was 15 months older than me. He was like my twin, and we argued a lot, but he was always there for me. And when he was 34, I was 33, um, he went missing, and they found him later, and it was pretty tragic. And it was always closed as an unsolved type mystery because it was on Walt Disney property and things got closed up quickly. So that was a part of my life that was painful. I remember I had a lot of miscarriages and um, I wanted a child. I have one to this day. I have two grandkids, but I went through five years of having five miscarriages and that was a very pivotal point in my life of um, pain and tears. And um, it left an impact on my life. And I wasn't an artist during those times, not full time, always wanted to be, but went into a career. And when I started my art journey, which was when my mother had Alzheimer's. I, I, um, I've told my story before, but I uh, got several degrees, got a lot of certificates, was a risk manager, one of the few women in um, the world that got a certificate in the project risk management. I was a compliance um, and um, ethics officer for the government. Uh, well, I owned my own company, and then I was um, on contracts for the government. And I climbed the ladder, but when my mom got dementia and Alzheimer's and um, needed my help, I took contracts where I could travel. And when she got so sick, that's when I decided to pursue my art full-time, because what if... What if the gene was in me to get Alzheimer's? So that's when I pursued about seven years ago to do my art. And then it was around five years ago that I quit all contracts um, after she had died and I became a full-time artist. And I hadn't learned what my artistic voice was. I never connected all the things about who I was as a person with um, what I wanted to do in my art. And it takes time, it takes practice. You don't just all of a sudden wake up and know what you want your art to say. Um, it's got a, it, there's a process you have to go through and I really feel that this process will help you. I'm talking a lot because I wanna show you how the pictures that I chose um, on my Pinterest board and even some separate ones that I'm going to share with you that haven't made it over there. I look back and how I've connected a lot of the happy moments of traveling all over the world with my parents. Um, the deep connection I have with my dad in art and music because he's the artistic music one. My mother was the academian one. Um, how all these things about the loneliness of being an only or middle child and um, my mother being busy because she worked, the um, loss of my brother and how that left me lonely. Um, and for several years, um, I, try, I tried to understand it. Um, the miscarriages and I look at the pictures that I chose 
and I look at the things that mean the most to me and I feel these things in my life and they go together. And then to take those pictures and incorporate them into my art in a way that speaks my voice of what I've experienced from childhood all the way into adulthood into who I am and how I want to express myself as an artist, I see how it all goes together. It's not going to be an instantaneous matchup for you. It's work. It's, it's thought processing. It's mapping together things. But once you start to marry all this together and you stop trying to be an an artist from another artist that you're trying to emulate that's okay for a while because even another artist I've had artists want to copy my work which is fine while you're trying to find your voice but eventually it clicks with you and then you say okay I really like to do her work and you know I like that red painting so I'm gonna try to do red painting and I'm gonna try to to use that technique when it clicks that there are parts of who you are that need to go in that red painting, not just my technique, but a part of who you are and your technique, it all, it's like a big, beautiful book is opened for you, and that's your voice. So let me show you the, I'm wordy here because it's that important, but let me show you some of the Pinterest pictures and some of the pictures that um, I showed you in the video and some others and connecting with my art and how they've married together and I think you'll start to understand maybe we'll all start to come together for you. So here is one of the first pages I did where I grabbed the Pinterest pictures and I just I'm showing the type of art that I create that to me emulates what I'm feeling when I look at these pictures. I don't know, maybe it's the loneliness, maybe it's the coziness, um, some of the textures, you'll see textures throughout a lot of the pictures that I liked and the paintings I tend to put together. I love candles. so. I'm not always sure why I interpreted a picture to feel like my painting. I'm really still learning and evolving in this, but I see a connection. And that's what I want you to see when you go through your pictures that you love. And if you're already established in your paintings see if you can marry some of your paintings over to the pictures if you can't start to understand that if you can create your artwork to incorporate how you're feeling who you are your past your childhood the things you love you will start to be able to create artwork that is really your voice. Again, I'm talking about textures. I love textures and I tend to put a lot of layers and textures in my artwork. I don't know if it's from being a child and moving around to a lot of different places. I know that living in Spain and traveling to Portugal and different places, Gibraltar, and the old world type of uh, the country or the little towns we went to, the textures that the stone and, and just the um, big bowls of paella that they cooked in that I have mem memories of. Um, I have a few memories and then pictures of all that. I think a lot of that textured 
life from living overseas in a European country really brought forth this love for the textures that I have that I always put in my paintings. You'll see tons of layers and and um, textured pieces or the way I do my brush strokes in my artwork. This one shows a picture of my kitchen floor, which is the black and white um, checkerboard. And then there is uh, the vase. There's a beautiful vase there and I have a lot of vases in my house that have this pattern in it. Um, I have bowls that have this pattern with dots and and not all the black and white stripes on things are even. In fact, the more uneven they are, the more I love it. And I find that I put those marks in my paper collages, in my paintings a lot. You'll see them in a lot of my work. And it's... Um, it's just the love that I have that is a repeated entity in both my aesthetic for my home, even my clothes, and you'll see that in a um, clip later, and it is incorporated it into my artwork. Not sure if this has pulled something from my past, but it is definitely an, an aesthetic. I know that my mother did not like a lot of color or pattern. She was very, uh, very plain and minimal in her uh, desires for the house. But my dad used to bring in um, colors. And when he was home from a band trip, oh my goodness, I remember one time I came home and he put triangles all over the wall. And um, the pictures of that room that he did were to me absolutely beautiful but my mother was in shock um it didn't stay up very long i know that i love that juxtaposition of curves and so you'll see a lot of circular and curve marks in my art and then i love it against lines and not necessarily lines that are always straight they can be very messy although these pictures here of the black line of the uh, lamp, uh, the black lines of the chairs is just very appealing to me. And then I love the circular, I love the lamp in the dining room picture, and then the circular chairs and the, um, the back of the chairs. And then I notice that I incorporate still the neutrals and then that same thing, uh, line even line work in uh, when I write in my artwork with a lot of circular and then the neutrals. It's a repetitive pattern for me. Um, I've always loved the cleanliness look of, I think, these types of rooms and you'll see it repeated in my artwork. I absolutely love the look of a very lonely painting and especially one that has a path and the path goes to basically nowhere and trees and I feel that in my artwork you see tree like um, branch like marks whether it's it's in my um, asemic writing or just scratches in the painting, sgraffito. Um, and I know that I spent a lot of time alone as a little girl, and I loved it. You know, with my mother working all the time, I did a lot by myself. I played uh, in my room a lot by myself. My sister came along five years later, but by then I was really a little older, and then my mom was busy with her. But I've learned, I love, I'm an introvert today, and I love the solitude and the peacefulness. But I love to see a very moody, very neutral, and I tend to see that in my artwork. I'm still exploring this more. This is another area that I want to know more about as to how they are connected for me. Another area, hash marks, spirals, line work. 
all this has such meaning to me and my artwork. Again, we're going back to some neutrals with some thrown in additional colors. Um, but you see in the one painting below where it's kind of chaotic, it almost looks like tree branches and the shape of hash marks and then some, some purple flowers on the top. And you see it in the top painting on the right. Um, it's almost like tree branch marks all over the painting. So I know that um, this has a definite meaning for me that is a repetitive theme in my artwork. I threw this in because I do work with color. And when I work with color, I tend to go pretty bold. And I know that I do walk around with paint all over me half the time. I'm not afraid of a mess. I'm not afraid of going out in public with my painting clothes on. It doesn't bother me if people look at me and think I'm messy um, with my clothes, with paint all over or splatters. It doesn't bother me. I know who I am. I'm very confident in that. And I think I threw this in because when I do color, I do color and I love I love color. I do always go back to my neutrals where I feel that those empty, lonely spaces, I feel very comfortable. And in fact, a lot of my red paintings lately, you'll see that they have a lot of space in them. But I knew that I needed to put this in there because this is definitely a part of um, my aesthetic journey. I wanted to throw this in because up there on the left hand side is a cushion that's in my living room with uh, a leather cushion behind it and then you'll see my clothing over on the right it's just a snapshot of a few pieces of jackets and a um, like a dress that I have purses it's all that same design and and I see it repeated in my art, this is a piece, it's a 30 by 40 piece I did just yesterday. And once again, it's got some of the neutrals in it. It's got the hash mark. It's got these, these line, this line work all the way through it um, with some drip marks. It's just a repeated um, style. And once I really started looking at the things that I loved in my life, and I put them in my artwork and it's 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 a it's a dance and it's it's not always easy when you first get started but once you start to get it you'll see this marrying of your life embedded in your artwork so on this last picture I wanted to put my love of these uh, of a messy art studio there is it is chaotic in my art studio, but it is, it's neat to me, but it is chaotic and messy to a lot. With these handmade brushes that I actually, these aren't mine, but I have made a lot of them, but there's a lot of them. They're, it's kind of messy, chaotic. With this balance of a lot of the pictures I have are these very lonely pictures. I'm still trying to determine the magnitude of these two things in my life um like i said it's not something that is you're gonna have it all together when you start to do this it's it's gonna take time and if it comes all together for you great but if it doesn't the more you look at pictures like even if i look at that i love that fence where that that wrought iron fence and then the picture I chose has almost like a wrought iron um, window there. It's amazing the things that you start to compare that marry up in your artistic journey as an artist. So I hope that you go down this path. And I hope that you take this journey along with me, because I'm still doing this myself. And gather the things that mean a lot to you, all the 
whys, the I loves, and intricate parts of your life is who you are today as a child and growing up and even the things that have caused you pain in your life. And start to put those down and start to map that to your artistic journey. And once you start to do that, your art starts to evolve. It doesn't all of a sudden you start painting in your artistic path. It takes time. But once it starts to happen for you, people will notice that there's something different about your artwork. And it's truly your personal, authentic, artistic voice. It's no one else's. It's yours. It's yours. And I want you to try to do this. And even if it takes you six months to a year to really start to um, put all this together, I know that you will start to see a difference in your artwork because it really becomes you and that's what I want for you so again thank you for being a part of this journey with me I hope it's helpful please let me know what you think and let me know if you're going down this journey with me like I said I'm still learning so um, I've, I hope you've enjoyed this and thank you and I love you all